Hello world, it's Almond Milk again, and I have returned with another challenge video for this Pico Gym workout series. In this video, we're going to be solving stonks from the binary exploitation category, worth 20 points. I gotta be honest, I hate binary exploitation. It is so tedious, and I just find it extremely convoluted and just boring. I'm also not that good at it. I'm sure if I was good at it, I would maybe have a no, nah, I wouldn't have any different opinion. Never mind. Then no, this category stinks. All right. But they are useful skills to learn. And this is the 20 point challenge, so we should be OK. So let's go ahead and start. I decided to try something no one else has before. I made a bot to automatically trade stonks for me using AI and machine learning. I wouldn't believe you if you told me it's unsecure. They give us a file. We'll go ahead and grab that make our stonks folder. Oops. There we go. We can do our little wget and then boom. All right. So should be in there. Yep. All right. Before we do anything further, we'll go ahead and connect to the domain using import using the command they gave us. Netcat in. All right, so we can buy some stocks or view my portfolio. Most of the time with these binary exploitation challenges, the goal is to do some sort of injection or payload inside one of the inputs that they give you to basically have the program like pop a shell, for instance, so that you can actually go in and run commands on the server that you're so that you can go in and run commands on the server that you're connected to or just pop a flag file or something like that, break an executable, et cetera. So let's go ahead and just go through these menu items too. All right, no stonks. All right, that didn't tell us anything. Let's try one. What is your API token? Let's just overflow with some A's, right? You know, you know, maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe this is an overflow, a buffer overflow, I mean. Okay, it's definitely... It's either I didn't put enough A's in or this is not a buffer overflow. So let's go ahead and take a look at the file we got. So we can go ahead and run code and I'll run that in the background using the ampersand. You can run any tool or script in the background using the ampersand after whatever executable you're running. OK. And so that got us this. And now we can let's go ahead and drag this over here. And we'll go ahead and open our file. Or not. All right, let's try running that again. All right, you know, we'll just we'll just open it the old fashioned way. All right, oh, here it is. It's already got our file loaded for us. And let's go ahead and take a look, shall we? So we got the file. All right, let's just go ahead and scroll down. Now, in, usually in these source code files they give us, there's always a uh, main function we can look at. So here's our little starting options, right? And then it's going to say if our response is one, buy stonks. If it's two, group portfolio. Let's go ahead and just start with one. Usually you can look at the code. And if you know the indicators of compromise for the different binary exploitations, it should be apparent to you if you know what to look for. So we don't technically know what to look for, but I know a lot of the basic things to look for. So let's go ahead and go look at our buy stocks function. And here we have right here. All right, so this is our going to be our flag file that's going to be read, read from. We can run this on our own, or build and run this on our own system, but I don't think we really need to do that for this one because it's just a 20 point challenge, although it could be underestimating it. Anyways, but as I was saying, we, we could compile and run this on our own system, but we need the flag file 
uh, we well, we can create our own fly file. And if we, you know, break the executable, right? You know, if we figure out what we need to exploit it, it should pop our own flag out. And then we can run whatever command we used or whatever injection we used in our own system on the server. But like I said, this is just a 20 point challenge. So I, I'm just going to go at it raw, if you know what I mean. But let's take a look. Let's keep looking. F gets. All right. So that's going to be our flag buffer. So it is going to grab or it is going to pull from the server, right? Because that's where this is running from. It's going to pull from the server the contents of the flag file and stored in this flag buffer, right? So it should be stored in memory when the programs run, or I guess when this function is called inside the program. So as soon as we press one, right, to buy stonks, it's going to, you know, run this part of the script and it's going to store our flag in on the stack or in memory, right? So if we keep going down, all right, nothing too interesting here. Stonks chosen, figure out how to read token from file for now, just ask. Okay, what is your API token? All right, there, that, there's that. Okay, I guess that's where it stores our user buff. Buy stonks with token. Aha. Okay, so this line right here is vulnerable and it's vulnerable to what is called a format string vulnerability. Basically, if you know you don't there's there's way different ways and different functions you can use to make this more secure, right? But essentially what it allows you to do is it'll just execute what is ever is inside the user buffer, right? If you don't specify like a you know a, a string type or whatever that's going to be loaded into the print f function, right? Print format string then you can basically print whatever. And format strings in C have different parameters that you can use that'll pull values from the stack in different ways. There's one that we'll be using the test called percent %p, and that's going to give us a pointer to an address on the stack. It's going to return a pointer to, to, uh, from, to an address on the stack. And that's what we're gonna use to test and be sure that this is a format string vulnerability. Right. So let's go ahead and go back up to where our connection is and we'll reconnect. Let's go ahead and buy some stonks. All right. So this is where our injection is going to go. Right. So we're going to go ahead and just test it with mod P and sure enough, check that address out. You guys see that? That tells me that. Uh, so our little, you know, parameter here, right? Our little format string character here is pulling an address from the stack, right? So what we can do is we can actually use mod X now, right? Mod X is going to actually return a bunch of hexadecimal values and hopefully we return enough hexadecimal values to where it'll give us a, you know, our, because we know the flag is being, from the code, the flag is being stored in a buffer on the stack, right? Once by stonks is called. So if we use percent %x, we can print out a bunch of, uh, hexadecimal values that'll hopefully give us the plain text flag, right? Because those values, those hex values are going to represent essentially characters on the stack. So let's go ahead and rerun that again. And we're going to use a bunch of mod X's this time. I'm going to and just control V that do a few gajillion of those. All right, so if we may have to do more depending on where the flag is on the stack, but hopefully it'll be in here. So what we can do to make this very easy is just go to our browser. So now that we have this, right, we can take this chunk, we can basically put it into our Cyber Chef. Is gonna show up. All right. Okay, so we'll place the input here. That looks terrible. So let's see, from hex. All right, ah, we can see part of our flag right here, right? That does look a little wonky. So why don't we try to clean this up a little bit, right? Let's try to find where that value is the reason it looks like this is because it's in little indian and it looks like there's also some jargon thrown in there too to it's not perfect right so we do need to clean this up a bit before we 
you know, can submit it. We actually need to, this is probably going to say something meaningful, right? So we will swap it over to Little Indian, but let's go ahead and take care of these other issues, all this other excess right here. And let's see, okay, so O and C, so let's go to an ASCII table real quick and let's go look at what O is. O is 6F, okay. So let's look for a 6F, 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 6F. What am I doing? I can just do 6F. All right, there it is. That's our boy right there. So essentially we can get rid of all the stuff behind this, right? And then we know that it ends in our curly brace and it doesn't look like there's anything readable after that. So we need to look for this curly brace. The curly brace should be, I think it's 7D. Yes, yeah, 7D. So let's look for a 7D. And that's probably it. There's not another one, right? Oh, there's three of them. But none of these other characters look too readable, right? Because there's our first one, and then I don't even see the other two 70s even being printed to the screen right now. So we're going to assume it's that one. We'll get rid of all this jargon right here. Okay, that looks a lot better. All right, so we already know that these three characters are junk, right? And that's right, but those are the three characters before the last are curly brace, right? So, and then, and that's looking like a complete flag almost. Now, this is a, in Little Indian, so what we can do is swap the Indians, right? Because, you know, some things are in Little Indian, some things are in Big Indian. And this program is reading things in Little Indian. So if we swap it, now we actually have a full-fledged flag here. So if we take this, right, and we go and put it in here, our flag is incorrect. Interesting. I wonder what we did wrong. Maybe it's those dots. I bet it's those dots. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's those dots. Ah, uh, yeah. Maybe they're... Yeah, those are like... What are those? 64... is... a D. What? What? Okay, well, those aren't even showing up in our... So, how about we just take this and get rid of the dots? For whatever reason, they're not showing up in the... So this should be our flag. There we go. 20 points. All right, so the dots were throwing it off. They were very condensing dots. I should have known that those weren't part of the flag. But I hope you learned a little bit about format strings. I'm glad this binary exploitation talents was fairly easy to do. I, th I guess you can might see the potential of how these could be you know, much more tedious. Like it gets way more complicated than this. You can actually like overflow the stack with format string and then get it to execute a command. I don't even know what I'm talking about right now. So we'll save that for a later video when it comes up, assuming I can do that. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Please drop a like, subscribe if you know, enjoyed the content and I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully I'll drop that very soon. So take care.